So Bet Angel contains a whole variety of different tools that allow you to maximize your potential within the market. One of the reasons that we do that is that there are many strategies that you can deploy into a market and your role as a trader is to join up the strategy with the market. That's how you profit in the long term. There are lots of tools that do functions that you may not be aware of. For example, if we look at the dutching tool, everybody knows that dutching is a great way of covering large sections of the field. However, did you know that there's a brilliant strategy that you can do in tennis that also involves the dutching tool? If you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, then visit the Bet Angel Academy, where you have detailed, structured Betfair trading courses. Or why not visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel Professional, but also visit the forum where you can get detailed images, examples, and downloadable files. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So dutching on tennis sounds completely bizarre. If you think about it, dutching is a great way of covering a very large number of runners. Well, I say a very large number. You have a very large field, the outcome of an event is uncertain. So you use dutching to cover a number of selections. That way you guarantee that you get a result if any of those selections go on to win. However, when we created the Bet Angel dutching tool, we did a couple of interesting little things to it. And that allows you to uh, use the dutching tool in small fields as well. It sounds a little bit bizarre. I mean, why would you dutch a tennis match? You know, you've got player A wins or player B wins. So, you know, you either dutch one or both of them and you can't dutch both of them. So why would you dutch one? Why don't you just place a back bet and do a normal trade? Well, what I'm going to explain in this video is a clever little tactic that you can use uh, on tennis trading that uses the dutching tool, but also it beautifully describes what your objective is when trading and also how you should approach trading, especially a sport like tennis. When you do pre-off racing, one of the problems that you have is the market's all over the place. You know, suddenly it's being backed, then it's being laid, and then it goes in, it goes out, it's all over the place. There's no certainty. It's a market that's driven by pure emotion. Um, and, you know, all of the dynamics behind that market um, create a lot of uncertainty. Nobody knows exactly what the price should be, so people are constantly trying to work out what it is. However, in a tennis match, if a player starts at a price over here, you know roughly where it's going to be if something occurs within that match. And you also know that, you know, if they're a breakup, a setup, um, or they've got a mini break within a game, you can get a good estimate of roughly where the price is going to be. So when you look at Bet Angel, what we've done is we've created the perfect tennis trading tool, which is Tennis Trader, because not only will it bring in live scores to you at very, very high speed, but we'll also look at the match and then give you a projection of where it thinks the price should be. And that will allow you to perfectly encapsulate your opening position, your closing position. And you can ask for a certain type of trade and work out what the payoff is and what you need to do to achieve that payoff. So you've got everything right in front of you there. So rather than try and talk you through that, let me give you a practical example. So I wanted to talk you through a very simple, easy to understand strategy uh, that you can use on tennis that really sort of quite appropriately it measures your risk, um, allows you to not overstake uh, and pinpoint an exact exit point within the market um, and so on. So let me describe um, what I'm going to do here. So we're on Bet Angel, obviously, and I've gone along to the Dutching tab here, and I've also fired up Tennis Trader. So if you click on the tennis ball, it will fire up Tennis Trader, um, and then we can start to scope out our particular trade. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is set the match type. So um, the play is taking place in Rome at the moment. So it is a three set match where the tie break is allowed in the last set. So we have set it up and told it what uh, the match is going to be like. Then we click on calibrate and then Bet Angel will adjust the odds to match those of the market and it will work out um, all of the detail that we need from there. So what I'm going to do now is click on the set matrix. And if I just resize this slightly so that we can see the whole of the set matrix. In fact, what I may do is lift this up because we don't need to um, click on any icons over there at the moment. You can pin it as well, which is what I've done. Uh, but what this is doing is it's laying out a plot of basically where the odds are likely to go within the match. 
Now, if, if one of these players slips up and injures his ankle, the, the odds are not going to get here. But based upon the way the market is set up, what the market's telling us, and everything that's been discounted into the market, if that remains the same, um, then this is where the odds will be given certain score lines. So um, we don't know at this moment in time who's serving first, but we're assuming that Novak Djokovic is serving first. If you want to change that, you can change the server up here, um, and then that will uh, modify everything that goes from there. So you can see we've uh, put Del Pocho as serving first, and um, then we can sort of plot out what happens from here. So it's nil-nil to start the match. It's 1.14 when we first look at the match. And as a consequence, um, as the match progresses, then this medium line here means that the match is tied. So this would be 1-0 um, to Del Potro. This would be a break of serve goes um, in Djokovic's uh, way. And then you can see, so this is the level scores across the entire match. This would be Del Potro serving and winning his game. And then the match would bounce along this line if um, that is how the match went on that particular occasion. But if we changed the server to Djokovic, then obviously the match would bounce along this line here. So we're saying um, Djokovic wins uh, Del Potro, Djokovic Del Potro, Djokovic Del Potro. But then of course, you know, one of them would get a break and then it would deviate from that line. There you go, you understand how the set matrix works now. Um, but what we have to do here is decide what an exit point we're going to have within the market and what we're going to do. So let us say, um, for example, that we expect the price on Del Potro uh, to drift at some point because Djokovic is going to get um, a, a break up at some particular point. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to back both of these. And if I just untick that, what I'm actually going to do with uh, Del Potro is put him into the margin maker. So if we use a stake of 100 with this particular uh, position, then basically if we put 1% margin in, which is what you can see here, this is the margin maker, this is the margin that we're putting into the market. If we ask for a 1% gain on Del Potro, we're basically saying for a £100 stake we get £1.18 back. That's not a huge return really, is it? But what the margin maker does is it says, well, okay, Del Potro is starting at odds of 7.8, he needs to reach odds of 9 um, for us to get our 1%. So where would he reach odds of 9? So if we look at the um, number below here, you've got the odds above are going to be Djokovic, you can see there in yellow, and then we've got the Del Potro odds below. So we can basically say if Djokovic is serving and he wins his first game, then you'll probably get that 1%. It's very, very likely that that would occur. Because if we look at the game matrix, you can do the same thing on the game matrix, and you can see all of the instances where um, Del Potro would reach odds of nine. So you can you can mix and match and see where things are from there. And also, if you want to look further on in the match, um, then it's possible for you to alter the scores, the games, the sets, the points, to examine each of those particular points within detail. So of course, you know, 1% return, we'd have to get this right 90% of the time or something. It would be quite, quite large. So let's ask for 10% margin on Del Potro. So this indicates that his price needs to get to 44. So you can see what we're saying here is if we think that the price on Del Potro is going to um, drift to 44, it's not going to be in that first set. It would have to be after that first set, it would be in set two. So what you're basically saying is Djokovic would have to be at a certain level. So let's actually um, give Djokovic the first set, shall we? We'll go in here and we're just going to say Djokovic is a set up. Uh, let's have a look at uh, what the odds would be. So basically we're saying Djokovic would be a set and probably a break up in order for it to hit 44. So you can see the opportunities to make money on Del Potro is a bit limited. But let's flip it the other way around. Let's go and reset this and say um, Djokovic, uh, we're in the first set, we've taken the set away from Djokovic and let's flip it round to Djokovic. So here we're saying, you know, if we ask for 10% margin, we'd get about £11 out of the 100. We're saying that his odds need to drift to 1.3. So what would cause his odds to drift to 1.3? Well, if we look at this, you're basically saying he just needs to go a breakdown. And that is how the odds would get matched at 1.3. So we would go into this market. We would stake £14.29. 
on um, Del Potro um, and the other bet would sit in the market with £85 at 1.3. So our total risk on this particular trade is £14 and our total return is £11.43. So it's sort of not quite two to one if you if you didn't want that. If you wanted to try and equalize this we could sort of say well what would actually make that two to one? So you can actually see here if we go for a 12% margin maker you can see that we're risking £14 uh, on our original stake when it goes into the market and we'll get that return across both of them of £14.35. So we're basically saying is Djokovic going to drift to 1.34 50% of the time? If you've broken down a complicated situation within tennis with multiple score lines into a very very simple trading judgment you're basically saying I'm going to stake £14.66 my potential return is going to be £14 whoever goes on to win um, and we need to, Djokovic to reach 134. How's Djokovic going to reach 134? Well, it's going to be, uh, he's going to be a break up at 2-1 or higher in the first set or later. So that would be what completes your trade. If I just pull up the unmatched bets area here and um, actually put this trade into the market, if I just click on place bets, we're doing this before the match has started, basically. If I click on place bets and it will place the bet into the market you can see that our liability is about 14 but our return uh, sorry it's about 15 and our returns about 14 so ever so slightly out there because of the spread there's no reason why you couldn't ask for a price rather than taking one but basically what we're saying is we're risking 14 pound uh, for a 14 pound return more or less uh, and you can obviously adjust the margin to however you wish but basically what you're actually doing here is you're framing the trade from a money management perspective very very clearly you're saying how much you're going to risk and how much you're going to return so your focus then shifts to the market to basically say and is that going to happen and we know from tennis trader when that's likely to happen um, it could be at this particular point in the market or maybe um, a break occurs very early on um, and then it looks like it's going to hold a serve and it will occur at some point between those two games um, or it could occur at any point within that particular market. Now the thing to bear in mind is they're playing on clay so you'd have to say you know does uh, Del Potro stand a chance of breaking Djokovic on clay and when is that likely to occur? What's his game style? How's he likely to play the match? And, and things like that. So you have to take that into account at all times. Your, your focus shifts from a money management trade perspective to focusing on the individual match between these two players. Um, but it's a really, really neat way of trading tennis because you're shifting your focus uh, to the actual match itself. And you don't have to take this match before the, the actually, you don't have to take this position before the match starts. You could take this position as the match is underway. But basically what we've done is we've staked some money um, on Del Potro. We haven't staked any money on Djokovic. We've put that in at a higher price in the market for that to get matched in play. So we actually have to remember to actually click the keep all position here, uh, the, the, the bet status, because this will keep the bet, which means that we've, or despite the fact that we've placed this bet before the off, it will carry it over to the in play period. Now, obviously, you don't need to do that if you're doing it in play, but the same sort of principles apply. What you're saying is, this is my risk, this is my reward this is how it's going to happen and then as a trader you make this judgment you say is it going to happen how's this going to happen um, but also you know it may not happen in this particular match but it may happen in the next one and you don't necessarily have to just do this trade once you could do it twice you could do it as many times as you like so all of those things come into play when you do this type of trade as well but essentially what you're doing here is you're putting a little bit of science and thought into the trade that you're going to do specifically with the intention of making a judgment on the match which is effectively what you're, you're trying to do you're trying to shift your skill to that as opposed to uh, just making a random judgment or thinking that something may or may not happen. You're actually making a pre-judgment on here and you're managing your risk and reward, which is essentially you know, the number one trick when you're actively trading. So yeah, using a combination of this particular screen um, and the Tennis Trader tool, this will give you a great place to pitch your perfect trade when you're trading tennis. 
So when I did this video last night, I was sort of picking on the match that I thought may present a good illustration of what we're talking about, and that's exactly what happened. Um, it was a very interesting match. Novak Djokovic won out eventually, but um, Del Potro gave him a right run for his money, and in fact, it looked at one point as though Djokovic may actually be eliminated from the tournament, but he managed to turn it around. And um, this is one of the great wonders of tennis, is that it doesn't follow a straight line. It doesn't go like Djokovic is this price and therefore it goes to 101. There are many, many paths that can take him to winning the match. And basically the odds reflect that. So the odds fly around all over the place and then eventually the match end ends. It's not um, impossible, but it's sort of quite rare for a match to, for somebody to dominate the match from start to finish. It does happen, obviously, but necessarily, uh, typically the path, you, you're looking for the path that the match will follow uh, to that conclusion. Um, and there are many paths. So the idea of tennis trade and why we've set out things like the set matrix is that you can plot all of those different paths and show the different paths and the way that the match could go and the odds that they will reach at certain points within that particular match. But a great little match, uh, very entertaining, um, and it provided a pretty good trading opportunity as well. So let's bring up the graph because um, I've collected data from the match um, and then I use that to analyze where the key points were within the match and if that gives me additional knowledge that I can use going forward, you can do the same on Bet Angel as well, incidentally. But what um, we're looking at here, if I bring up the graphic, is basically along the bottom hand, uh, along the horizontal axis, you've basically got the score within the match and then the vertical axis are the odds. What we've done is we've capped the odds um, at two because they obviously went to much, much higher prices when it looked like Del Potro was going to win the match. But obviously Djokovic turned it around um, and, it, and went on to win. But so that we could actually look at the data properly and not distort the graph, we basically capped it at two so that we can discuss it in some depth. So let's have a look at what happened within that particular match. Well, Djokovic was serving first and he won his service game and then Del Potro uh, just won his service game and it sort of went on serve for a little while until we got to um, three games all. And when we got to three games all, um, Djokovic was serving to go 4-3. There was a bit of a battle going on within that particular match, uh, within that particular game I should say, and then um, Del Potro had the breakthrough. So at that particular point the odds went out to about sort of 140-ish in the mid-140s. And Tennis Trader was saying a 3-4 in the first set to Del Potro would be 141. So we're about on, on the money there. Now there can be little variances uh, when you look at the odds because there's certain moments when momentum is with one player or the other or that the market is beginning to discount one thing or another. It's not unusual to see the market deviate from a model uh, because somebody somewhere has seen something that makes them think that the momentum is with one player or there's something that is favouring one player. So it's not unusual to see it deviate from there. So Tennis Trader is a good guide to where the price should be. It doesn't necessarily mean it will be absolutely spot on. And also because we represent it in odds, I often suggest that you look at it in terms of probability because a 1% move in probability can be quite different at shorter prices than it is at larger prices. So always bear that in mind. But um, yeah, it went 3-4. Then uh, Djokovic held on to his serve and then it was 5-4 to Del Potro. And because he's only one game away basically from potentially winning the set then you'll tend to find that the odds go even more in his favor so tennis trader was saying that the odds would be 1.5 and if we actually look at that particular moment in time when we're looking for the match to go um, perhaps to that extra set you can see that the odds are bouncing around all over the place and that is because there were mini breaks going on in that absolutely critical game towards the end of that particular set but when del potro actually won that particular set, um, then the market reset itself to about mid 160s. And if you look back at the start of the video, you can see that Tennis Trader was looking at the odds and indicating that they should be about uh, 164, so about mid 160s. Uh, so you can see that it's successfully plotted out where all of those key points were within the game. But of course, you know, the, the little movement in odds that you see are basically when it's going like sort of love 30, 30 all, advantage juice, advantage juice in either direction. That's what creates that whoa, 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 whoa bit within tennis. So you have to be careful about where you want to take your positions or where you want to take them out. But the advantage of putting a closing position in the market ahead of where the odds are likely to be is that you're much more likely to get matched. You don't have to wait and see what the market says the odds are. You can actually pitch it at about the level where you think there's a sensible exit point within the market from there.
But you can basically see how the match panned out from there. Um, the odds drifted out when it looked like um, Djokovic was in trouble, um, and then he managed to uh, pull it around in the second set. He ended up uh, winning the second set a little bit easier, or it looked like he was going to win it easier, because um, he was 5-2 up at one point. But then uh, Del Potro came storming back in and took it to a tiebreak, so you can see the odds go flying out again there. I can't remember exactly what the odds were on Del Potro, 9 or 10 perhaps. Um, the uh, uh, sorry uh, on Djokovic they were probably nine or ten at that point because um, for Del Potro looking like he was about to win the second set they would have come into about 110 115 or somewhere around there so you just do the inverse but you can see the, the, the odds disappear off the top of the chart at that point because it looked like Djokovic was going to lose but then of course he did win the second set and then he um, the odds came crashing right back in again there was a bit of a tussle in that third set, but eventually he turned it around and the odds came crashing back in again. So the important thing, you know, we've just given you a narrative of something that you can see on the screen. But the reason that I'm describing it for you like this is to basically give you a, an idea of how the odds are moving around and how that's being reflected within the market. Um, but also think about it, you know, we just did one trade where we basically put the position before the match had started. Now, always the risk with doing that is you don't know what's happening in the underlying match itself. So very often it makes sense to have eyes on a match so that you can get an interpretation of what you're looking at and how that's going to influence where the match is going to go from there. But if you look at the key points within the market, we opened a position at the start of the market, but we could have opened a position um, at the start of that second set uh, when Djokovic came storming back into the match um, and then at the beginning of that last set. So in fact, you're looking really at four key entry points within that particular match. So you could have repeated this trade at least four times and had reasonable margin out of it. And when you look at how we balanced the profit against the potential um, liability at the beginning of this video, that shows you that while we were playing with a 50-50 chance at the beginning of the video, what we were effectively doing is not playing with those odds at all because we could actually repeat the trade more than once. Now, you could decide that once you've done that first trade, you just reinvest the money back into the market or you could actually work with the same amount again, but with reduced liability because you've got profit in the market. And this is one of the keys with tennis trading, is that you can actually do that. Obviously the difficulty with tennis trading is you have to sit there and watch the match, so it could go on for hours if, um, if you necessarily want to. So I'm happy to trade tennis, but it depends what sports are on at which particular time. I tend to pick whatever I think is going to work particularly well at that particular moment in time. So if a tennis match goes on for three hours, imagine how many horse races I could do, and that could be a couple of football matches. So that's one of the judgments you have to make. But when there's nothing else on, um, or it fits nicely into whatever time schedule that I'm trading at that particular moment in time, I'll often turn my hand to tennis, simply because I understand the market pretty well. Um, and it's a very clearly defined market in terms of trading expectancy. You can pretty much frame uh, how the market's likely to trade and what you want to do before the match has even started. Now, as the match is underway, you may want to reappraise some of those elements, but typically what you do when the match is underway is you've got the opportunity to strike more than once. So you can either increase the profit that you've got or reduce the potential liability on the stake that you're using. Whichever way you look at it, that obviously has a positive outcome on your trading expectancy over the course of the entire event, whichever way you choose to trade it. But anyhow, there is a very useful and interesting way of looking at a tennis market and also an interesting way of executing a trade on a tennis market using BetAngel.